Good morning. Welcome to Pitlochry Baptist Church. My name is David Barry. I'm the pastor of the church. And welcome to a very blustery Pitlochry. And we're just up here in the woods to find some kind of shelter to record. We've been going through the Shepherd Psalm these last five weeks. This is the final week. And what we've discovered is this. At the beginning, the Shepherd Psalm, Psalm 23, is about journeying the pasture, the pastoral element of the shepherd, of how God takes us beside still waters and he walks with us. And then it talks about the pilgrimage, about going into the, the valleys, how God journeys with us, pilgrimages with us as a good shepherd, even in the dark times. And then we, we came to the point where it spoke about how God... Uh, gives us plenty and protection and provision, the table and the anointing of oil and the cup overflow. And this week we come to the final part and I'm going to explore the theme of how God pursues us. And when I think of that word pursuing, I think of Psalm 139 again, which is a Psalm of David. And it reads like this as we begin our time of worship. Before Eden leads us and before it Layla reads our scriptures. O Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up, up, up to the heavens, you're there. And if I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise in the wings of the dawn, if I settle in the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I know that full well. So let's worship. Let's worship the God who pursues us, who has made us fearfully and wonderfully. So, so good 
said that I am able, oh, I will sing. goodness of God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters, he restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I like to take you places, and so I'd like to take you once again to Queen's Park, Glasgow, this time way back to 1989. And it was the October of that year, and it was the gathering in the hall at the Queen's Drive building of Queen's Park Baptist Church. It was a gathering of the first ever King's Kids Christmas outreach. And young people literally were gathering from across the nation to join this team, 40 odds, I would imagine. And I arrive at the, the Queen's Drive building fashionably late. Most, if not all, are there already. And I can remember stepping into the hall from the kitchen door and walking in and seeing this throng of, of young people, a lot of excitement, a lot of motion. But right down at the far end, at the, the back door, I noticed one person in particular. And she had bobbed hair, curly bobbed hair. And she was pretty and she had olive skin and she was juggling four juggling balls. I'd never seen somebody juggle four juggling balls in my life before. But it wasn't that. I just, there was just something. Now, people say love at first sight. I can't claim that. But I was intrigued at first sight. And unbeknown to me at that time, Miranda noticed me. No doubt because I made a big grand entrance. But Miranda noticed me. And Miranda may tell this story slightly differently. But I would say that Miranda pursued me for 18 months. And I kind of knew that if I went out with Miranda Noble, things would be different. And it was, it was true, 18 months later, <laughs> I invited her out to a movie, Dances with Wolves, and at the interval, that's when we started going out. The movie was so long, it had to have an interval. And it's that idea of pursuing, it's that idea which I'm going to finish this shepherd Sam on. And I'll read the verse again, which Layla read out earlier. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I've said that it was in another talk in Leaven in the east coast of Scotland when I was 15 that I became a Christian. The truth be told, that conversion experience was a long process. Yes, it was dramatic for me then, where Jake Booth sitting with me, praying for me. And after I confessed my sins and asked Jesus to be my Lord and Saviour, Jake hugging me, and he was a huge guy, hugging me and saying, congratulations, brother, you're a Christian. And my response was, I'm a what? Even though that was my dramatic moment, I can look back and see from the age of 11, if not before, God pursuing me. And it's over time that I've noticed that. I didn't notice it at the time, that God saw something in me, that he saw value in me, no matter what I thought about myself, 
and through a, a, a whole host of experiences pursued me until that moment in leaving where I realised this is what I want. Much like when I was with Miranda in the cinema at that interval uh, watching Dances with Wolves, I realised I do want to go out with Miranda Noble. And then it was afterwards that we realised that we wanted to be married and spend the rest of our life together. C.S. Lewis tells a, a wonderful, in the book Surprised by jo Joy, he gives a wonderful wee account of when he came to faith. And I'll read it, although this wee piece of paper is covered in snow, <laughs> so I'll try my best. This is what he says. I think this is wonderful. You must picture me alone in that room in Magdalene, night after night, feeling whenever my mind lifted even for a second from my work, the steady, unrelenting approach of him whom I so earnestly desired not to meet. That which I greatly feared had at last come upon me. In the Trinity term of 1929, I gave in and admitted that God was God and knelt and prayed. Perhaps that night, the most dejected and reluctant convert in all England. I did not even see what is now the most shining and obvious thing, the divine humility which will accept a convert even on such terms. The prodigal son at least walked home on his, his own feet, but who can duly adore that love which will open the high gates to a prodigal who is brought in kicking, struggling, resentful, and darting his eyes in every direction for a chance to escape. That's how C.S. Lewis describes his moment of admitting God is who he is. Surely goodness and love will pursue me all the days of my life. Another way of saying will follow me. God pursues us. Even if we come kicking and screaming, even if it takes years, why does he do that? Is God somehow just want to rebalance the universe in the way in which it should be, simply just to balance it? It was meant to be that way and it's going to be that way no matter what, because I am God and I've created it. It's went um, all over the place. I'm going to fix it. Or does God say this? I pursue because of love. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139, which I read out at the beginning. You and I, whether we come to the good shepherd, kicking and screaming and biting with our eyes darting all over the place because we know what is happening. We know that it's going to cause dramatic change. Or whether we come having sought out the Lord and discovered him and are in that moment of overwhelming joy, run into the Father's arms. Whatever way, God pursues us because we are worth it. L'Oreal's advert, you know that, because I'm worth it. That started off in 1971 by saying, because I am worth it. Then in the 90s, it was because, um, because you're worth it. And then now, the new L'Oreal advert is all inclusive because we're worth it. But, but you know, scripture does not change. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever will acknowledge him shall not perish, but have eternal life, shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Doesn't change. So I don't know how you're feeling, whether you feel unlovable, unloved, that no one pursues you, whether you're seeking and you're frustrated and you're desperate to, do, to know. I don't know if you have been a, a follower of Jesus Christ for decades. Love him with all your heart or your love has grown cold. I don't know. But I know this. God pursues us. He loves us. He's compelled. He's compelled to, to find us compelled to bring us back home. He is the good shepherd. I have loved you with an everlasting love. 
I have drawn you with loving kindness, says Jeremiah. James, in the New Testament, says, come near to God and he will come near to you. I want to read one last thing as we think about this idea of God pursuing us, the shepherd, the good shepherd pursuing us. Uh, and I want to finish again with C.S. Lewis and with one of his writings. It was the, uh, is it the Voyager of the Dawn Treader, if memory serves me right, and there's a character, Eustace, whose heart has grown black, envious, hard, and he has turned into a dragon. It's an incredible story. But at this moment, Aslan, who's Jesus, Aslan the great lion, brings this lost young boy who's like a dragon beside the waters. He's at that moment of wanting to change, of wanting to come home. And this is what C.S. Lewis writes about Eustace, but he's writing about himself. The water was as clear as anything, and I thought if I could get in there and bathe, it would ease the pain. But the lion, Aslan, told me I must undress first. So I started scratching my myself, and my scales began coming off all over the place. And then I scratched a little deeper, and instead of just scales coming off here and there, my whole skin started peeling off beautifully. In a minute or two, I just stepped out of it. I could see it lying there beside me, looking rather nasty. It was a most lovely feeling, so I started to go down into the well for my bay, for my bath. But just as I was going to put my feet into the water, I looked down and saw that the skin of my feet was all hard and rough and wrinkled and scaly, just as it had been before. Eustace then repeats that process a second and a third time, but growing increasingly despairing. Then the lion Aslan said, you will have to let me undress you. I was aware of his claws, I can tell you, but I was pretty nearly desperate now. So I just lay flat down on my back and let him do it. The very first tear he made was so deep that I thought it had gone right into my heart. And when he began pulling the skin off, it hurt worse than anything I've ever felt. The only thing that made me able to bear it was just the pleasure of feeling the stuff peel off. Well, he peeled the beastly stuff right off, just as I thought I'd done it myself the other three times, only they hadn't hurt. And there it was, lying in the grass, only ever so much thicker and darker and more knobbly looking than the others had been. And then he caught hold of me. And I didn't like that much, for I was very tender underneath, now that I had no skin on. And he threw me into the water. It smarted like anything, but only for a moment. And after it became perfectly delicious, and as soon as I started swimming and splashing, I found that all the pain had gone. And then I saw why. I turned into a boy again. So if you're feeling God's pursuit is like claws of a lying, and it will be painful for a while, it is not punishment. For God desires you, he pursues you with love and kindness to dwell in his house in relationship with him forever. That is how I conclude the shepherd psalm. And it is an invite to you and it is an invite to me. And I ask that in this wintry, blustery place that we pause to pray. Father, in your mercy, hear us where we are. Hear our prayers, the deep desires of our heart, the longings, the pain, whatever may be there. And Lord, would you draw us closer to you that we would find that you are good and that your love endures through all things and forever. Thank you for Jesus, for what he has accomplished on the cross 2,000 years ago, defeating the power of death and sin, and that he has risen. Lord God, draw us by your Spirit in Jesus to you, that we would know you and we would know your joy and your love and your peace and your kindness and that they would follow us all the days of our life. And I ask that in the name of Jesus, the risen one, and by your spirit. 
a m e n Amen. And may God bless you real good. King of kings, majesty, God of heaven, living in me, gentle Savior, closest friend, strong deliverer, beginning. Thank、you